Okay guys, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that if the bucket and its contents have a total weight of 20 pounds, determine the force in supporting cables DA, DB and DC. So let's say that the tension in cable DA is let's say T1. Let's say this is represented by the magnitude of the tension in this cable is let's say T1 and in DB let's say that, that is T2 and here we have T3. So we are required to find T1, T2 and T3 and the system is in equilibrium right and the weight of the bucket is the weight of the bucket which is acting vertically downward in the negative z direction is 20 pounds. So now we have to represent, we have to write T1, T2, T3 in Cartesian vector form and then we have to add up uh, the forces along x, the component along x, the components along y and the components along z and they must be equal to 0. So now if we want to represent this T1 as a vector, Cartesian vector, so T1 vector will be equal to T1 magnitude times the unit vector from D to A. Or we can say that this is T1 magnitude and the unit vector from D to A is the position vector from D to A divided by its magnitudes. So this is equal to T, uh, this is T1, T1 and the position vector from D to A. So we can find the position vector from D to A if we move from D until that, until we reach that point A. So we have to travel from point D in the negative y direction that is 1.5 feet in the negative j direction so I will write uh, minus 1.5 j and then once I reach here I have to travel some distance in the positive x direction and this point B and D it is at a distance of 1.5 feet from the y axis and this point A is 4.5 feet. So to reach that point A in the x direction, we need to travel 4.5 minus 1.5. So 4.5 minus 1.5 is 3 feet. And so we have to travel 3 feet in the x direction. So I will write uh, plus 3 in the positive i direction. And then once we reach here, we have to travel uh, plus 3 feet in the positive z direction. So I will write plus 3k. And now its magnitude is, we can find the magnitude of this position vector, so that will be 3 square plus 1.5 square. We have to take the squares of the magnitude of the components of the position vector from of x, y and z. So this is 1.5 square plus 3 square. So this will give us the magnitude. So the magnitude is 3 square plus 1.5 square plus 3 square again. So this is 4.5 this is 4.5 let me write this as 4.5 and we can divide each component by 4.5 so that will be the Cartesian vector representation of T1 so let me write that T1 is vector is T1 magnitude and that is 3 divided by 5 3 divided by 4.5 this is the magnitude is multiplied with this uh, unit vector. So this is 3 divided by 4.5 i then minus 1.5 divided by 4.5 j plus 3 divided by 4.5 k. So this is the Cartesian vector representation of that T1. Now T2 is we can write that T2 Cartesian vector. So this is T2 magnitude and the unit vector from D to B. And we can write this as T2 magnitude and the unit vector from D to B is the position vector from D to B and divided by its magnitude. So T2 and the position vector from D to B is uh, 1.5 feet in the negative y direction. So to reach that point B from D we need to travel 1.5 feet in the negative y. So I will write minus 1.5 j divided by its magnitude its magnitude is 1.5 square under the square root so this will cancel out so 1.5 will cancel out 
this 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 will be remember that this is 1.5 square under square root and the remaining components are zero so 1.5 square is again 1.5 and 1.5 will cancel out so we will be left with minus j so this is t2 minus j or we can write it directly that t2 is along the y axis but it is acting in the negative y direction so this is t2 minus j so i will write this is minus t2 j so now t3 so t3 cartesian vector this is equal to t3 magnitude and the unit vector from d to c the unit vector from d to c or we can say that t3 the position vector from d to c divided by its magnitude so t3 and now to find the position vector from d to c we need to travel from d until we reach that point c along the x y and z axis so the position vector from d to c so to reach that point c from d we need to travel 1.5 feet in the negative x so i will write minus 1.5 i so i will reach here then i need to travel some distance in the positive y direction and that distance will be 2.5 minus 1.5 so 2.5 minus 1.5 is 1 feet so i have to travel 1 feet in the positive y so i will write plus 1 j and then i need to travel 3 feet distance in the positive k or in the positive z so i will write plus 3 k and its magnitude will be 1.5 square plus 1 square plus 3 square under the square root so this is t3 cartesian vector t3 magnitude and that is we need to find this magnitude which is 1.5 square 1.5 square plus 1 square plus 3 square so this gives us 7 divided by 2 which is 3.5 so this is 3.5 we can write that this magnitude is 3.5 and now we need to divide each and every component by this magnitude so that is the unit vector from uh, d to c so this is minus 1.5 divided by 3.5 i plus 1 divided by 3.5 j plus 3 divided by 3.5 k so this is the cartesian vector representation of t3 so now since the system is in equilibrium and as we can see that the weight is supported so we can write this weight is a cartesian vector so we can write that the weight is acting in the negative z direction so we can write that this is 20 k and this is in the negative k direction so this is the cartesian vector representation of the weight of the bucket along with its with its contents so now if the whole system is in equilibrium then the summation of forces along x must be equals to zero so now we have to add up the x components of all these four vectors this is t1 t2 and t3 and the weight so the x component of t1 is 3 into t1 divided by 4.5 so if we add up the summation of forces along x so we have to take this component this is 3 t1 divided by 4.5 and t2 has only one component which is acting in the j direction there is no component in the x then t3 has this component in the x so this is minus 1.5 t3 divided by 3.5 and the weight is acting in the uh, in the k direction so there is no component of the weight in the x so this is equal to zero or we can write this if, if i bring this to the other side of equation so we will have 3 t1 divided by 4.5 equals to 1.5 t3 divided by 3.5 and now if i cross multiply so that will be 4.5 divided by 3 so we will be left with t1 so t1 we can write t1 in terms of t3 so that is 1.5 into 4.5 divided by 3.5 into 3 so this is 9 divided by 14 or we can say that this is 0 0.643 so t1 is equal to 0 0.643 t3 so this is t1 in terms of t3 so now if we find t3 so we will be able to find t1 now uh, the summation of forces along y must be equal to 0 since the system is in equilibrium so now we have to add up all the j components so this is t1 
So this is minus 1.5 T1 divided by 4.5. Then this J component is minus T2. And then this component which is plus 1 divided by 3.5. And the, here the J component is 0. So this will be equal to and this is T3. This is equal to 0. So now T1 we can write T1 in terms of T3 here. So that is minus 1.5. And in terms of T1 I will write that 0 0.6. 43 T3 divided by 4.5 minus T2 plus 1 divided by 3.5 T3 equals to 0. And if I bring this T2 to the other side of equation, so we will have T2 in terms of T3. So this is T2 in terms of T3. Now we can simplify this. This is minus 1.5, 1 1.5 1 .5 into 0 0.643. and divided by 4.5 so this is 0 0.214 minus 0 0.214 t3 plus 1 divided by 3.5 1 divided by 3.5 is 0 0.286 0 0.2863 equals to t2 and we can add up both of these. This is minus, minus 0 0.214 plus 0 0.286. This gives us 0 0.072. Let me write it here. 0 0.072 T3 equals to T2. So now we have T2 in terms of T3. Here we have T1 in terms of T3. Now if we add up uh, all the Z components, so the summation of forces along the Z axis will be equal to 0. Again, the system is in equilibrium. So, T1 has uh, 3 T1 divided by 4.5 in the positive K. So, I will write 3 T1 divided by 4.5. Similarly, T2. So, T2 is only acting in the J. So, the, the K component of T2 is 0. Similarly, we have this. This is uh, plus 3 3t3 divided by 3.5 and this is minus 20 so this is minus 20 and this is equal to 0 so now i can bring this 20 into the other side of equation so this will become positive and here we have 3 divided by 4.5 and we have t1 in terms of t3 so i will write 0 0.643 T3 plus 3 divided by 3.5 and T3 in terms of uh, so so we need to write this T3 since the whole equation will have only one unknown so there is no need to write this T3 in terms of other variables so this is T3 so this is T3 and this is equal to 20 so now if I simplify this I can add up both of these so this is if I take T3 common so we will have the equation like this. So now we can add up this. So this is uh, 3 into 0 0.643 divided by 4.5 plus 3 divided by 3.5. So this gives me 1.286. 1 1.2863. 1 and this is equal to 20 and if I divide both sides by 1, 1 1.286 so we will get T3 so 20 divided by 1.286 this gives me T3 equals to 15.55 pounds 15.55 pounds so now once we know T3 we can find T2 since T2 is in terms of T3 this is T2 0 0.072 into 15.55 so 0 0.072 multiplied by 15.55 this gives me 1.12 approximately so 1.12 pounds and similarly t1 
zero point six four three zero point six four three into t three which is fifteen point five five this gives me nine point nine nine so we can say that it is approximately ten pounds.